Now, the final game I got to the table is a Kickstarter preview prototype copy of Battle of Gog. This is was sent to me from Vitaly, uh, who is, as far as I know, the owner, but or at least works for Crazy Box Inc. Uh, this was sent over for us to take a look at. So this is a preview, again, not a review. Um, this is an Old Testament biblically themed war game that features a very ingenious map making element and familiar gameplay elements combined in what I think is an interesting way. Now, the map building actually uses the box, which is specifically designed so when you flip it over, the bottom is inset a bit, so you get a lip around the outside. Now, over the typical back of the box art and information and why you should buy this game is a light grid that you can see. And at the start of the game, you are going to shuffle up a bunch of map tiles and draw them and place them on the map with some specific rules for them. Now, these tiles, to me, look like Sid Meier's Civ II. Like going back to the Amiga days, they're they're featuring square gridded terrain of different types. Excuse me, square gridded terrain of different types with different resources on some of the spots. So, well, interesting and unique with the with the box mechanic. Is it useful or helpful to uh, um, use this as opposed to using something like nonstick shelf liner right on your table? All right. So the thing you're missing is the fact there's a grid there, and you can put a tile anywhere. I can't do that on my nonstick mat. When I've got a, a huge grid and I put one out kind of in the middle and then I want to put another one four away, there's no way I could do that. Now they could produce a play mat, but a play mat would probably be slippery. So it actually does work really well. So I, I had the same thought you did as I was like, why don't we just grab one of my nonstick mats? But like, unlike Catan or one of those games where you're building off one spot and continuing to build, this is, I've got the whole grid. I, off the top of my head, I don't know how many across by how many it is, but it's not small okay. and you can put it anywhere. So because of that, you need that grid that's on the back of the box. And then once everything's placed, I will say it's not tight. Like you, I, I expected it to like just fit and not slide at all. It, there is a little bit of movement, but like enough that you're not going to spill it unless you flip the lid. Okay. Now, once the map's built, you start off with three soldiers on the map. These are represented by those little micro dice. People like to use them for battle tech. They're little tiny D6s. The pip on the dice represents the level of the unit. Now, early in the game, you're going to start with three on the board, and you're going to use them to explore out into the map. Well, not really explore. It's all, out, it's all there. There's no exploration. They're, you're going to spread out on the map and found cities. Now, cities are represented by larger D6s. And in this case, I think they did a smart move here by using the RPG-style dice that have numbers instead of pips. So it's easy to tell the two different types of dice apart. Now, once you found your first city, every round going forward, you're going to start generating resources. Now, resources are generated based on the map features around your cities. And it's one of those things, again, it, it reminds me of Civ, because if you have a level one city, you only get the squares right adjacent, where if you're level two or higher, you get further out. And there are three different types of resources to collect. You've got wood, food, and gold. Now you're going to spend these to do stuff like hire more soldiers, upgrade the level of your soldiers, upgrade your cities and et cetera. So I haven't had my hands on this product myself as, as the uh, pandemic keeps us apart. Mm -hmm. But as I listen to this with all these dice on tiles on a box, have you run into any troubles nudging or bumping the box and, and causing uh, displacement of things? It hasn't happened yet, but I would not want to small play on a small table. Like with my big game table, right. it's far enough in the middle. You're not going to bump it. And if you bump that table, nothing moves. It's a big, heavy table. It's a big board game table. I wouldn't want to say put this on a second cup table, even though the box might fit just with that little wobbliness, because yes, if your dice get moved around, there isn't it. The tiles, again, aren't going anywhere. They're, right. they're well designed. But once you start putting little dice on these squares, yeah. there is a chance. Now, one of the things that got me to review this, I had watched a previous review of it, or preview, sorry, it's again, it's not out yet, is, is the way the combat works. This features mostly deterministic combat. To attack, you just move one of your soldiers that's got more pips than the opponent on top of their, their die, and then you remove their die from the board and reduce your soldier by the number of levels equal to the level of the opponent. So if you move your five onto a three, you remove the three and set your five to a two really simple i love that like that's brilliant in my opinion like it's such a simple system now sieging cities is harder you need three soldiers and they have to be as tough as the city so taking out cities is difficult but if you do manage to take out a city instead of going down you are in a scroll and your troops actually go up one level yeah it seems straightforward and very small worldish though i do wonder how your troops get better after engaging in a siege but hey so you know 
I actually think this has historic precedent because we're going back to ancient battles. And traditionally, when you would capture a city, you would recruit most of that army into yours. So I think it represents you amalgamating the conquered city's troops into your own. All right, then. Now, you win the game by either eliminating all of another player's cities. No, it's not every other player's city. So if you're playing with more than two, you just have to eliminate one player's cities. Collecting five scrolls or controlling the four corners of the map by having a soldier in each of the four corners. Now, along with all this, there are rules for finding treasure, uh, learning abilities, moving Gog, who is a little miniature on the map, and the Angel of Retribution along the board. This is all stuff I'll cover once we do a full detailed review that I'm not going to get into now. Overall, this game feels like a mashup of three things. It feels like Civilization because of the way the maps and the cities work. That whole top-down view of your map and you see a, a, a fish in the water and you see a turkey over there means you generate two food. That just feels so much like Civ to me. Then it feels like Catan because you get all your resources at the start of the turn and you have this pile of resources and then you generally, until you learn it, look at this card that shows what you can spend them on and you spend your resources to do things. Like it really feels like spending two wood to build, or two, two brick to build a road kind of thing. It's I spend two food to put a new troop out. I spend two wood to improve their equipment. I spend two of each resource to found a new city and so on. And then you mentioned it, Small World, that deterministic combat of I count how many are in my stack, reduce how many are in that stack and move. It's almost identical without the push or luck because a small world has a thing where if you're not equal, you can roll a die. That's gone. Now there is dice rolling here. If you attack someone at the same level, you actually roll dice instead of it being deterministic. Now, again, this is a prototype. It is very much a prototype that is still in the middle of being developed. This is not a finished game. Not only will the components and artwork possibly change by the time the game's finished, many of the rules are still in flux to the point that the designer wrote me again today with a rule fix. So the big thing that seems to be fluctuating are the resource costs to do things, especially with the scrolls. Now, the reason I really want to talk about this tonight is this game is going to hit Kickstarter on June the 8th. And I hope I'll be back with a detailed review next week to give you more information on it, but it will go live before our show goes live. So just in case people do want to check it out or if that sounds really interesting. Fair enough. 